Hello, and welcome back to Wall Street Bolt, where the titans of industry share their insights. I'm your guide through the world of finance, Alex. Today, we are sitting down with a pioneer, a visionary leader, steering the field of epigenetics, Professor Moshe Schiff of HKG Epitherapeutics. We're going to start by diving into the currents of this exciting and rapidly emerging science. So thank you for being with us today. And we'll just uh, start with you. you. Yeah, we'll just start with you introducing yourself um, and then just telling us a little bit more about HKG Epitherapeutics for those who may not be familiar with your work. Right. I started working on investigating epigenetic mechanisms around 40 years ago. And so we were really pioneers when we were looking at epigenetics and small viruses that infect bacteria without even knowing that they would lead to such a revolution in medicine. I started my lab in after doing my postdoctoral work at Harvard Genetics Department. I started my lab at McGill University in Montreal, focusing on understanding the role of DNA methylation in cancer. And very early on, we figured out that DNA methylation, which is an epigenetic process, plays a critical role in cancer. And therefore, it is a very important target in treating cancer. And later on, we understood it's an important resource for early detection of cancer. And around um, six, seven years ago, uh, I decided that the time has come to harness you know, the science of epigenetics uh, for early detection of disease, particularly um, cancer, but other uh, diseases as well. And my focus was on building a commercially viable platform that could develop tests and deliver tests uh, to detect cancer and other diseases early. And uh, we have developed a number of tests that we already offer them uh, in, our, in our lab uh, in Hong Kong. Okay, and we'll touch more um, on some of those tests in a little bit. Um, but first, so recently you announced the International Journal of Cancer has published new data on the ability of your company's proprietary epicervix test to detect cervical cancer in patients sooner compared to some of those more traditional screening methods. So uh, just tell us a little bit about that and then just talk about some of those traditional methods as well and how epicervix is able to do this faster. Right. The, the problem of detection cancer early is that we have a mixture of normal DNA and very small amount of cancer DNA. In this case, it's in the cervix. And even though when you look at that tissue, it looks like pre-malignant, but kind of normal, the doctor with current tests is unable uh, to say whether this early pre-malignant stage has already progressed to cancer. And what the science of epigenetics allows us is to detect those few molecules that are already converted to become cancer molecules because they have a completely different epigenetic pro uh, profile. And using um, modern techniques of next generation sequencing, we can find those molecules. So we developed an assay that can detect those molecules. And we collaborated with the Department of Oncology and Epidemiology at McGill University, who were looking at 8,000 women and screening them for cervical cancer. And we had the opportunity to look at samples that were diagnosed as premalignant, not as cancer. And we were able to detect in a fraction of these already the cancer DNA. Of course, when we had real cancer samples, uh, we detected them as well as cancer. And that promises that we will be able uh, to detect cancer in samples that otherwise would not go detected. And this, of course, has immense implications, essentially life and death implications, because early detection of cervical cancer and very early detection um, can save lives almost 
in all cases, about 93% of times. Whereas the late detection results in only 15% survival. So it is very critical that we can do that. The traditional yeah. tests were used in these samples, but they missed some of the cases. And these are the cases that I believe, uh, you know, tests like ours, which can, you know, fish those cancer molecules because of their different epigenetic profile uh, will play a very important role. Okay, awesome. And then more recently in June, uh, HKG Epitherapeutics worked with partners in Bangladesh to develop a new test for early detection of liver cancer. So right. tell us about that, um, what kind of promise it's holding for maybe some high-risk populations. Um, and yeah, just give us a little bit of background on that. Liver cancer is is one of the fastest growing cancers in the world, but it's endemic in chi in China and Asia. In these populations, there is a very common hepatitis B or C infection, leading to chronic liver disease. And people with chronic liver disease are like ticking bombs; they can develop cancer at any time, liver cancer. But it's unknown when it's going to happen. And unfortunately, in almost all cases, it's missed. Even though traditional methods of follow-up are you being used on this high-risk population, it is missed. And we're talking high risk, we're talking about a lot of people. In China, for example, there's 100 million people, 100 million people that are at risk of developing liver cancer. And traditional methods fail again and again in detecting the conversion from a liver disease to cancer. So we attempted to develop a test that is a blood-based test where we are essentially looking for cancer DNA that comes from the liver tissue in the blood. And again, the same idea as in the cervical cancer. We use the same methods, same platform, next generation sequencing and looking for uh, those molecules of DNA that have been converted to cancer. And then we, uh, we did a study in Bangladesh, another country where, the, where liver cancer is very, very common, and deaths from cancer are almost 100% uh, from liver cancer, um, to see if we could detect uh, cancer in blood much earlier. And we had some cases that were very early, like zero stage, and we could already detect the cancer DNA in those cases. That will have immense implications in, um, in saving many, many, many lives uh, in, in, in those populations at a very high risk. But I need to mention that high risk population for liver cancer are not limited to China or Asia. Uh, in the Western world, there are other causes of liver cancer like alcoholism. Of course, hepatitis B and B C also happen in, in Western countries. So this is a global disease, and this is an example how targeting a high-risk population with a blood test uh, could, could make a huge difference. And we didn't only show it scientifically, we developed a robust test that we believe could be delivered in an automated, we have automated the process, we created the platform, both of the biochemical stages as well as the computer computational stages so that this test could be delivered in, 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 you know, in a high throughput uh, to a large population with a reasonable cost. So two you know, very significant developments there that could have far reaching impact. Right. Uh, what do you think those mean um, for the future of HKG? Are you looking you know, towards expansion or, or I guess what's next on, on the heels of these two developments? Right. So what we did is first develop a platform, kind of a beta version of a lab that can deliver those tests. Because we have a lot of good science, but very little translation of that science to practical, clinically um, doable tests. Right. And, and, and developing this platform involved not just developing the test itself, but also the automation and rigor of the process, as well as the computational part, so that you don't need 50 PhDs to analyze the data that comes, which makes it a very boutique kind of niche kind of product. We are creating products that could serve humankind. 
And uh, we need to understand that early detection of cancer, as well as other similar diseases like diabetes and you know cardiovascular diseases, are almost cover all entire humankind. So if you really want to make an impact, you need to develop tests that could be delivered to a lot of people in vast you know, geographic areas and in a reasonable cost, because these tests have to be done periodically. It's not like, you know, you, you do it once in a lifetime, like a genetic test and you know your risk. This changes all the time. So you keep, have, keep doing it. So we developed a platform and our idea is to copy this platform in multiple geographical locations, multiple places, so that we can deliver those tests across the world and so our next challenge is probably North America, uh, where we would like to, um, you know, establish uh, our, our flagship laboratory uh, to be able to deliver those tests. At this point in time, we, we sent all the tests to Hong Kong. It, it is reasonable for a small uh, capacity of tests, but our goal is to expand uh, worldwide and to maintain equal standards across the world because uh, all our computation is done in the cloud and, and all our processes are automated in a way that they could be copied in many, many different places uh, and, and quality controlled with a very rigorous process. And you, you just touched on this a little bit, so maybe expanding that point, but what do you think is currently the biggest problem and then market opportunities for epigenetics that HKG is working to address? Um, so our major problem is to um, first to convince the medical community about the value of these tests and to validate them across, you know, different cancers and in different places. So we need to build bridges to the to our stakeholders and our stakeholders are diverse. They involve, you know, the general practitioners and the general healthy population, as well as the, the more professional oncologists. And it involves, um, you know, health insurance companies who want to reduce their costs by reducing disease, um, as well as um, as the entire community. So education is a big part. This technology has not been used in medicine, so it is a revolution in 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 medicine. I believe that epigenetic tests will replace many of our traditional tests, but it will take time in educating. So education is a big part. Of course, financial resources is the other part because copying these labs involves uh, investment. And, um, and technically, uh, the main challenge is how to increase the capacity of automation to be able to deliver uh, the, the tests to the kind of you know, people that we think will be using those tests. And I, and I think it, they will be widely used. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, is there anything else that you wanted to say about epigenetics or HKG that you didn't cover? I think we covered everything, but, you know, to summarize, I would say that, you know, epigenetics is a science that has matured on the bench, but hasn't been translated yet to the bedside. And it could revolutionize numerous aspects of medicine you know, from early detection to intervention to personalized uh, medicine. And the challenge and the big gap is creating the platform that can take those scientific models into deliverable clinical products. And this is the gap that we're trying to fill. Right. All right, well, this has been extremely informative today. Can you let the audience know uh, the best place they can go for additional information on your company. So we have a website, which is called HKG Epitherapeutics, as our name, .com. Uh, they can find a lot of information uh, on, on our company um, from there. And of course, they can always approach us directly. Um, and the emails are on the website. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. And we look forward to monitoring your company um, progress and speaking with you again in the near future for an update. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye.